Alright, today we're going to talk about Cartesian products, and these are sort of a very, very quick application of what we just did in the previous video. It doesn't really require any operations, it's just sort of something that arises from having sets. But first we need to talk about ordered pairs. And an ordered pair is really any two elements enclosed by parentheses. So as an example, we have 4, 2 which you might notice on a graph is, well, some point for two, which is right there, and you can represent that as an ordered pair. And what's special about ordered pairs is that if you reverse the elements, they are not equal to each other. So we can see here that two, four and four, two are completely different points. Now, a lot of texts, what they will do is they will put them in these pointy brackets to symbolize that they are an ordered pair. And I would highly suggest you do that, except in the case of graphs in Cartesian coordinates, because it's not common practice to do that. In fact, it's not always common practice to list ordered pairs as pointy brackets, but in some areas, it is important to distinguish ordered pairs from unordered pairs. So either notation will work. This is always going to be ordered this one you can assume to be ordered unless stated otherwise. Now Cartesian products are basically sets of these ordered pairs where the first element in the set comes from the set A and the second element in the set comes from the set B. And these are called the Cartesian products of two sets A cross B. This is also known as the uh, cross product. And this is read as A cross B. So it's a little bit abstract sometimes when you're starting out set theory and stuff just to read a, a definition of a set and understand what it means. So we have an example here. And we have the set A, which contains three letters, A, B, C, and the set B, which contains the number 0, 1. A cross B is the set where every element in A is paired with every element in B. It is kind of like multiplying. In fact, if we have A plus B plus C times 0 plus 1, well, then we have A0 plus B0 plus C0 plus A1 plus B1 plus C1. It's the same idea, except these are ordered pairs. So we have A goes with 0, A goes with 1, B goes with 0, and then B goes with 1, and then we have C going with 0, and C going with 1. So this is the cross product of A cross B. It's a little bit more straightforward when you see an example. But basically, every element in A is paired with every element of B, one at a time. But what is the cardinality if we have this new set? In fact, we saw here, well, let's take a look here. The cardinality of A is 3, because it has 3 elements. And the cardinality of B is 2, because it has 2 elements. So let's count the cardinality of A cross B here. Well, we have one element here because it's an ordered pair. Each ordered pair is one element. So we have A0, A1. We have these elements. And it looks like we have six elements here. Okay. Well, what we say is, if A and B are finite sets, these have to be finite sets, then the cardinality of A cross B is the cardinality of A times the cardinality of B, which is kind of straightforward because if you're pairing each item in the first set with each item in the second set, it's going to be the number of items in A times the numbers of items in B. And that is exactly what you get when you have the cardinality of a cross product. Of course, why have just ordered pairs? 
why not have ordered triplets and ordered quadruplets and ordered nth or n tuples so here we have an n tuple and this would be a set of n tuples and what this means is that if we have a cross b cross c then we just have an ordered triplet where the first one comes from a the second one from b and the third one from c and that's what this notation means where the element a elements are always lowercase is in the set capital a which is always capitals for sets then we have b in b and c in c so the first element comes from a the second one comes from b the third one comes from c and these are all the ordered pairs and when we have n of these sets, taking the cross product of n of these sets, then we have a1 comes from capital A1, element A2 comes from set A2, all the way up for an to come from set an. Now this might be a little bit confusing to grasp, but if we take a is equal to the set 0, 1, b is the set a, B, and we have C is going to be the set pi, then A cross B cross C. Well, we take 0 from the first set, A from the second set, and pi from the third set, and now we go 0, and then we take B from the second set, and then we take pi, and then we take 1 from the first set, A and pi, and then we can take one from the first set, b and pi. And now we have all possible outcomes. And you can see that the cardinality of a cross b cross c is the same thing as a times b times the cardinality of c. So this previous thing we talked about just extends to n sets and an nth Cartesian product. Let's do some practice here just to see if you guys understand this, one thing we did here is we did b cross a, and this should be fairly straightforward because we're taking the cross product of two sets, we're just reversing the order instead of a cross b, it's b cross a. So the first element is going to be in b, so we have 0 and pi, we're going to have 0 and e, and we're going to have 0 and 0, because we took these three pairs and now we're going to do the same thing except with one so we're going to have one pi one e and one zero and that would be the cross product of b cross a now there is one thing i should mention here we are listing these in a specific order only for convenience these do not have to be written in this order the pairs can be in whatever order they want, but the elements in the pairs must be in that exact order. It's just if you just start randomly picking them, you don't really have a good system to make sure you got them all and didn't do any repeats. Now B cross B is probably a little bit more challenging if you don't abstract what you're doing to a, an intuitive level. What this means is that the first element comes from B and the second element comes from B. So it's kind of like saying, okay, I have b is 0, 1, and we're going to call this b1, and b2 is the set 0, 1, and we're just taking b1 cross b2. It's the same thing. So what we have here for pairs is we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So again, if we draw this, we go 0, 0, 0, 1, and then we do the other set here, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So every element in B is being paired with every element in itself, essentially. Now what if we take the empty set and we cross it with another set A? Well, if you remember, the empty set is this set here. Now, what does this mean? Well, when we take a Cartesian product, we take every element in the first set and we order it with another element in the second set. But there is no 
elements in the first set. So we can't cross it with anything else. Therefore, it's going to be the empty set. In fact, something cross the empty set is always going to be the empty set. So if you have an empty set and you cross it with, say, A cross B cross C cross D cross E, and you keep going on and you keep crossing it with stuff, uh, this is not actually good notation at all. Let's make this slightly better notation. Then this is still going to be the empty set because we cannot have an element in an ordered pair that has nothing in it. So that was Cartesian products. Hopefully this makes intuitive sense with you. If not, I would highly suggest leaving a comment in the video or taking a look at the book of proof. There is a good explanation there as well. In fact, most of these examples and explanations I've altered from that book just a tiny bit, if at all, because I think the book does a really good job at explaining the set theory stuff. Anyways, next time we're going to be taking a look at either set operations or subsets, which is delving into the specific elements in sets and how many ways we can arrange everything in the set. So that'll be a lot of fun, but you should have a good understanding of this stuff before moving on.